In this video, we are going to create this responsive navigation bar using React and Tailwind. As you can see, we have this logo on the left with a hover effect and these links in the middle with some hover effects as well. On the right, we have this search bar. And for smaller screens, first we hide the links and second, we hide the search bar and this little menu icon comes up when you click on it. We have this drop down menu with some hover effects as well. So we are going to start from scratch and I will explain every single step. So let's get into it. So to start the project, just create a empty folder on your desktop, drag and drop it inside VS Code. Here I have my empty folder. Let's open a terminal and in this terminal we are going to create a React project and to create the project I will use Vt. So npm create Vt at latest. And if you haven't used Vt already, it is going to ask you to download the create Vt package. So say yes. For the project name, we are just going to put a dot in here. Otherwise, it is going to create another folder inside the current folder. The package name can stay the same. So from this list, we are going to select React and select JavaScript. Let's type npm install to install the necessary dependencies. And this is going to take a couple of seconds. And the project is created. As you can see, we have the React project. Now we are going to add the Tailwind into it. Let's go up to Tailwind's official website. And inside the search, we will look for Vite. Click on this one. Install Tailwind CSS with Vite. So this page basically explains step by step how to create a React project from scratch and add Tailwind into it. We have already created our project, so we can jump to the second step, which is install Tailwind CSS. So there is two lines of commands. The first one is going to install Tailwind, post CSS and auto prefixer as dependencies. That's what this dash D means. So let's copy and paste this inside our terminal. And this is going to take a couple of seconds as well. And after this is done, let's copy the second one and paste it. So this is basically going to initialize Tailwind and create a config file and press enter. If you take a look at the files, you can see that we have a Tailwind file in here. We also need to add the utility classes into our main index.css file. So let's look for that file and it is going to be inside the source folder. So index.css, let's delete everything inside and paste this. Inside my terminal, I will type down npm run dev to run this project on my browser. And as you can see, we have the project. It looks really messed up because we deleted all the CSS and now we are going to clean everything up. First, let's delete this SVG. Let's delete the app.css file. Inside app.jsx, I will clean everything up. Let's delete all of these lines. And now that we cleaned everything up, the only thing left is to add the template paths inside our config file. Let's copy this. Let's delete all of these and paste this one. So this is basically going to look for this type of files for Tailwinds, such as a JavaScript file, a TypeScript file or JSX file. In this case, we are going to be using a JSX file. So finally, we are done with the setup and now we can start. I will delete these fragments and create a div. And this div is basically going to be the background. So I will set its width to full and height to full, which means width 100% and height 100%. I will set its display to absolute and let's create a gradient background. So background 
gradient to right and the gradient is going to start from blue 400 to emerald 400 so now we have a background we can create the header we are going to make this a flex container and inside there is going to be logos and links and a search bar so i want to put all the available space between these items so i will set the alignment to justify between so flex is display flex and justify between is justify content space between and also we are going to center the items on the horizontal line as well so items center i will set the text to black let's give it a padding as well so pui6 and px8 and this means padding top 1.5 rem and padding bottom 1.5 rem you can also see how many pixels it is as well and px8 is padding left and right so for the header we have 24 pixels of padding at the top and the bottom and 32 pixels on the sides next we are going to increase the padding for the screens that are larger than medium so md px-32 and this means for the screens that are bigger than 768 pixels the padding on the left is going to be 8 rem and the padding on the right is going to be 8 rem as well let's give it a background color as well so background white and a drop shadow it is going to be medium so inside the header first we are going to have the logo on the left so let's create a anchor tag and inside this anchor tag I will put a image which is going to be the logo and for the logo I will copy and paste a Tailwind logo into my assets folder and to be able to use it I need to import it so import logo from assets logo.png and inside the images search attribute I will open up a set of curly braces and put the logo inside and the logo is huge right now so let's make it smaller by setting it to w52 which is with 13 rem and when you hover over it we are going to make it just a little bit bigger and a transition to make it smooth so we are done with the logo outside this anchor tag but still inside the header I will create an unordered list for the links and as you may remember from the beginning of this video this unordered list is going to be hidden when the viewport gets smaller so I will set it to hidden and for the screens that are extra large we are going to display it as a flex container we are going to center the links inside and put some gap between them font is going to be semi bold and text is going to be base inside the unordered list we are going to create some list items so the first one is going to be home products and contact all of these list items are going to have the same classes so we will type them down at the same time I will press Control on my keyboard and click inside this list items create a class name attribute let's give it a padding of 3 when you hover over we are going to make the background color background sky 400 and again on hover the text is going to be white the corners are going to be rounded and transition for the hover effects cursor is going to be pointer when you hover over them and in this way we quickly type down all the same classes without copy and pasting right under this unordered list I will create another div which is going to have the search bar inside so this is going to have a position of relative and it is going to be hidden and for the screens that are medium we are going to display it as a flex container we are going to center the items so item center and justify center I will put a gap between them so gap 3 so for the search icon 
and the menu icon that we are going to create, we are going to use box icons. So we will go up to this website of box icons. You can find the link in the description. Let's click on usage, scroll down, and we will use it as a font. So let's copy this. And we are going to paste it inside our HTML file, which is going to be here. Let's paste it inside the head section. And now we can use box icons. So to create a search icon, we will use a i tag. And for the class name, we will use bx, bx search. And as you can see, this created a search icon. And right next to it, we will have this input. Let's give it a placeholder of search. Let's give it a padding. So PUI 2 and padding left is going to be 10. Let's give it rounded corners and a border. Border is going to be blue 300. And when you click on this input, the background is going to be slightly darker. And the outline is going to be sky 500. We also need to get this search icon inside this input. And for that, we are going to set the icon's position to absolute because we set the parent element to relative. Now this icon is going to be positioned relative to this div. Let's move it from left and increase its size. Let's make it gray as well. And it looks like it's in the right place. We are done with the search bar as well. And finally, let's create the menu icon. We are going to create another eye element. And for the class names, it is going to be bx, bx-menu. And for the screens that are x large, this is going to be hidden because we want this icon to be visible when the viewport gets smaller and we are going to display it as a block element. Let's increase its size. And when you hover over it, the cursor is going to turn into a pointer. So we are done with the basic styling. Only thing left is to create a simple logic for the drop down menu. Let's see how everything is looking. The hover effects work. Let's see if the menu icon comes up. The links are become hidden. And the search bar becomes hidden as well. And we have the menu icon. So finally, let's create the drop down menu. So to create the drop down menu, we are going to use a react hook, which is use state. So right inside this app. So we are going to create two variables inside a array is menu open and set is menu open. And we are going to use the use state hook. As you can see, it automatically imports it. So the reason why we use use state is because opening and closing a menu is basically a state. And right now the menu is closed. So the state is going to be false. And the reason why we have two variables inside this array is this first variable is called a current state, which is right now false because the menu needs to be closed when the screen is larger and it needs to be visible when the viewport gets smaller. And this second variable is called a setter function, which is basically responsible for updating this first one. So the current state, which is false, which means the menu is closed. And we are going to use this function to update if the menu is open or not. So let's scroll down to find the icon. And here is the menu icon. We are going to create a onClick function. And inside the curly braces, we are going to create a anonymous function, which is going to call the set is menu open setter function. So this means when you click on this icon, it is going to call this function. And this function is going to change if the menu is open or not. So if the menu is open, it is going to reverse it. 
and close the menu. If it's closed, it is going to reverse it again when you click on it and it is going to open the menu. And there is only one step left, which is to create the drop down menu. I will create a div and inside this div, we are going to define some tailwind classes, but this time it is going to be inside curly braces because I will use backticks. And the reason why we use backticks is because we are going to apply some logic and styling at the same time. So I will set the position to absolute. And for the screens that are larger, it is going to be hidden. Let's bring it down a little bit by saying top 24 and left 0. So top 24 is top 6 RAM. Let's set the width to 100% and background to white. Let's make it a flex container and change the flex direction to column because we want the links to be stack on top of each other. Let's center the items and put some gap between them. Font is going to be semi bold. Text is going to be large. And we are going to create a small transition on this menu. So transform, transition, transform to make it smooth. And this is where we are going to use some logic. So I will open up another set of curly braces using a dollar sign. And if the menu is open, we are going to display it with opacity 100%. So it is going to be visible. And if it's closed, we are going to set the opacity to zero, which means it is not going to be visible. And to make it even more smooth, I will use some more transition using style property. So transition, transform 0.3 ease and opacity 0.3 ease. And in this way, this transform, which is opacity 100% to opacity zero is going to be a lot more smooth. And inside this div, let's create the list items. First, I will delete the list style type, set the width to 100%. Let's center the text inside. Padding is going to be 4. And when you hover over these links, the background color is going to be background sky 400. And the text is going to be white. Transition to make it smooth. And cursor pointer. Let's copy and paste this. And we are finally done. And let's see if responsiveness is working fine. We have a drop down menu with some smooth transition. Hover effects are working fine as well. So this is how we can create this responsive navigation bar using React and Tailwind. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for your time and I will see you next time.